All right, guys. So today I'm going to talk to you about the disaster draft. So it's kind of it's sound really negative and everything, but it actually is an extremely negative thing. Um, as an individual, if there was a rule that wherever you're going, whether you're playing a game, like going to school here, obviously, if there was a rule that you didn't know about, I'm pretty sure all of you would want to know about it. So with this so-called disaster draft, it's a rule within the sports organizations within, I guess, America, the NBA, NHL, MLS, and the NFL. And this whole broad like topic of disaster draft kind of got started um, after the Minneapolis, or Minneapolis, Minneapolis. Min there we go. Minneapolis Lakers of 1960. Um, background behind that story: the Lakers had just finished uh, playing the St. Louis Hawks, and they uh, they lost, and they get on the plane, and it's a big giant snowstorm. Y'all two be quiet. Um, cool out, man, please. Um, so as they get on the plane, and the pilots think that everything's fine, well, it's a snowstorm, and the gears of the windshield wipers break down. So the pilots have to, I guess, on a plane, there's like the little side window, so the pilots, each of them are alternating on who's flying so that the other can wipe off the windshield with their hand. So they're in the air going however fast, 300 miles an hour, using their hand to wipe off the snow. Well, they can't see anything. And the owner of the Lakers had actually asked the pilots to use their own judgment on leaving. So he was cautious about it, and um, David Aldridge of ESPN actually wrote a story about it, and he said that the pilots afterwards had no idea that it was coming, but you would honestly think that if it's snowing outside, you're flying into a snowstorm. So they go, and the pilots realize as they're um, entering into um, Minnesota that they don't have enough fuel to get back. So the pilots are like looking around trying to contact people. Obviously it's a bad snowstorm, so radios are kind of down. And so they find a field. Um, the only reason they found the field was because the players actually said that one of the engines was starting to smoke. Because if it's running out of fuel, apparently within a plane, it just, the gears like just start going to where they overwork themselves. Because there's nothing actually helping them go, so they're just trying their best to go. Um, so the plane, sees the field, well they crash land. Everyone's like, here's about this, and it seems bad that the plane actually engulfed in flames on the wings. But as the flight attendants and the pilots got everyone off the plane, everyone was fine. And uh, I have a quote from one of the players, and he stated, he said, I have, I have three children. The first thing that came to my mind, I have three kids and a wife at home, I need to get home. He said, your life can flash before your eyes and in a matter of seconds, but I knew that we weren't gonna die. Now, I tried to find research on if this man was, his name was Stilt Leonard, so I'm guessing he was skinny and tall, I don't know. Um, and he kind of just, that, that spoke to me in a sense that this is actually job actually came into play because after that instance, the owner of the Lakers talked to the rest of the executives around the league and found out that this this needs to come into play because if something ever goes wrong, you have to figure out what you're going to do. So um, I'm sure all of you heard about the Marshall University uh, when the football team plane crashed and killed all the players, but well, they had no team. Well, the disaster draft within the sport leagues is if players are disabled or, I guess, the team is bound with an immense amount of injuries is how I, how I would explain it, or just a plane crashes and people die. Um, the executives have to go around the league and select. It's three players the teams get to keep on their team. Then everyone else is put to a pool. In a pool, in a sense of, they randomize how the, how the team will select their next player on their team, per se so that they will begin to rebuild their team. And so that means if you're on a team and you have your star players and everything, and then a 
plane crash happens, but you have five star players, you can only keep three of them. So that leads over into the means that like all the other teams will get, I guess, an even shot at restarting. Um, and as you so-called restart, it kind of just builds into a regular NBA draft. Which is a regular NBA draft is the team has a roster of 13 players that are active on the roster. 15 of which are actually on the roster, two are your reserves. And each year the teams have two picks to select two players either from college or international level play. And within that, they get to finish. And finish drafting the team, making their team full again. Um, and so, within conclusion to the disaster, Jeff, like, it's kind of a really bizarre thing. It blows my mind each and every time I try to understand it, each time I, I try to figure out why it happened, what it is. Just, God forbid, it ever happened. Because that's the last of individuals playing a sport, but so the last of individuals playing for their city, their town, their families. Um, so, if anything that you guys pick up, I guess you learn something new that there are solutions to certain events, but just pray that nothing like that ever were to occur.